All right, thank you everybody. It is Thursday, March 7th, 2024, Brookfield Select Board meeting tonight. Um, I call this meeting to order at 620. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, announcements. Um, this meeting is being recorded by Brookfield Community Media. Is there anyone else in the room recording tonight? Uh, Mr. Kelleher and no one else. Excellent. All right, um, announcements. Uh, continue with announcements. Um, Brookfield's Chapter 90 apportionment for fiscal year 25 is expected to be just south of $167,500. Um, the meeting minutes will declare the exact amount, but I can't remember those digits. Um, Brookfield Ecumenical Food Pantry at St. Mary's is seeking donations of condiments, paper products, liquid hand soap, shampoo, and laundry detergent. Items may be dropped off Wednesdays and Saturdays from 9.30 to 11 a.m. at the Food Pantry at St. Mary's Church at the corner of Lincoln and Howard Streets. And for those not familiar, the um, entrance to the Food Pantry is in the back of the church, accessed from the driveway on <coughs> Howard Street. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brad, would you uh, do yep. warrants, please? Uh, FY24-18 withholding $28,574.91, FY24-18 payroll $190,908.73, FY24-18 accounts payable $149,524.99. All right, thank you, sir. All right, item number one on the agenda, town administrator position discussion. Um, with Kelly's decision to not um, renew her contract, uh, we are uh, back in the market for a town administrator, or at least we can, I think Brad and I, you and I expressed an in, that we were intent on doing that. Yes. Which I don't recall <laughs> us taking, I don't, did we take a vote on that? I don't think we needed right. to. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think we need to, and if right. we did, it would be unanimous anyway. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so the, uh, so I think the, uh, so the, uh, I, I know that when Brad and I talked, we uh, both expressed our um, uh, preference to uh, maintain a, profes a, a, a professional in that position and that um, I think what we want to do now is uh, start planning how we want to uh, move forward with um, identifying the uh, Kelly's successor for no one will replace her. And so my thought is the, I, I think the, uh, the two options available to us are to go and um, initiate this directly through the select board or I mean when we first hired Kelly we had a select committee and I think part of the I Beth you were on the board at that time I, I don't recall the reason I, I served on it but I don't recall the reason why the board decided to do that and so I'm not sure I think it was to save us from the screening okay and um, there's I can't remember exactly how it works a lot of their deliberations there's not a requirement for it to be an open meeting mm -hmm. And so that way, if people want to keep their applications private, they can largely be kept private until we get to the final selections that get interviewed by the board. Mm -hmm. um, I think that those were the primary reasons that we had cited previously for <coughs> setting up a, a committee for it. Okay. The screening committee can use exemption eight. Yeah. Under the um, exemption. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we discussed about having a search committee last yeah, yeah. The, the idea came up I think we, uh, we we didn't make a decision on that but we did um, decide to reach out to people who had previously served on the search committee and see if they would be uh, interested in serving uh, if we decided to go with that route and I believe according to Karen everyone Karen everyone we reached out to was interested I think okay I'm sorry yeah I meant to say no, everyone you heard no, back from was interested oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I had the right Everyone else agreed, and they probably will too. I just haven't heard back. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I and you didn't reach out to me because I don't think I can serve. Well, that, that. that's why I reached out to <laughs> Jeff instead. The chair. You could have one chair member of the select board on the committee. Okay. You were at my interview, weren't you, Beth? With the committee? I seem to remember talking to you after. No. 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 No, no, and I was not on I the think, select board at the I time. I think uh, no, you were on his advisory. Yes. I think I might have called with some follow-up questions after your interview with the select board. That's where you would remember. Oh, 
or else I missed your actual interview. I'm not sure which it was. So. So, so there are any opinions on the committee? Uh, I'll make How big do you want it to be? It was seven members in the past. The last one was seven. Members. That was the are, are we was seven are we allowed members. to do? Are we allowed to? Do, so I know there are certain committees for which the law prescribes alternates are okay. Do we have the option when we structure this to do like five foot? Since we have five people that have said yes, can we structure it with five with, with two alternates? And then you can, because it's an ad hoc committee. You can create do whatever you want to do. So why don't we, for the sake of like making sure that they don't struggle to get a quorum in case Peter or Bruce Dutton reply, that we make them five with two alternates, structure five with two alternates, vote to appoint the folks that have said they're interested. Well, we don't technically have a charge other than Maybe, maybe we do that at the next meeting. Yeah, that's a charge, just that one line. Yeah, that was the one line. That's what we gave them previously, right? Mm -hmm. And then we could, we could appoint the first five and then appoint the two alternates the next meeting. And then that way, if they want to start getting together, they can. No. If they're alternates, does that mean they're non-voting members? You'd have to so, describe that in the charge. Right. So we would have to add to the charge that they could be, you know, a voting member if required for a quorum. If they've met certain requirements, we can indicate that they can attend all meetings, but they, you know, only vote if if there's less than than five. If the if there's uh, less than five mm -hmm. in attendance, but the alternates can vote on times when the other folks. You know, when there's even one absence, you know, one mm -hmm. of the alternates can vote. You know, yeah. we can basically set up the rules of the road in the charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, just, just what, what, I, what I got in my head is that as if, if the alternate's not going to be able to vote unless someone else is missing, that's um, weak sauce, for want of a better term. And I don't know that, I, I'm not sure we're going to get interest from people in serving in that role. So part of me thinks, does it make sense just to but make But alternates them can't typically vote on any committee. They're only there to replace a voting member uh, if there is right. a Right, and, and, and so my point is, it's like if, if oh, so in order to interest them to serve, do we just appoint them? And do we, do we start with five, and then if we've got two more that want to go, do we um, expand the committee? So, so my recommendation would be five with the alternates, with the understanding that if the alternates happen to be... Well, in one case, this is like the fire chief. He's going to have a vested interest in showing up to the meetings, whether he's voting or not, and expressing his opinion to the board mm -hmm. or the committee. Yeah, and because the alternates, right. the alternates have the have the right to participate. They just don't have a vote and, unless, except. And, and frankly, sub, sub and I don't know if Bruce Clark will say yes, but he's the type of person that, if there's an opportunity for engagement on something that matters, he generally will. Mm -hmm. And. You know, I think it, it, it makes it safer for us because then they can always have a quorum. Yeah, I, I, I understand that, and I, I think that's a good goal. I guess the, the question I have is if it turns out that that structure is suboptimal, do we have the option to reorganize the committee and, say, decide that we'll have seven full members at I think, a future date? I think everything that we proclaim by vote, we can always rescind and Reproclaim yeah. by okay. different folks. Then, so. then, then given, given the fact that if it's not working out, we can change our mind fairly easily, I'm fine with starting with the, I'm starting with the five members and two alternates as a starting point. So, all right, so I make a motion that we uh, form up um, a five-member town administrator committee charged with recommending two to three qualified candidates to be interviewed by the Board of Selectmen. Additionally, uh, the structure may include up to two alternates with voting rights in the absence of any of the five or members uh, if uh, more than the alternate if there are more alternates more alternates than 
vacancies at any given meeting, <coughs> voting, alternate, shall be determined by drawing lots. I think that covers just about everything. Second. <laughs> 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 All right. I have any discussion on this one? I think Beth was fairly nope. uh, thorough in her motion. All right. All in favor of uh, Beth's motion to create the uh, Town Administrator Search Committee, please say aye. 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 All right. Now, we should also, uh, for them to search, we should provide them with a job description. We do need to provide them with a job description. Do we still have a good approved I, I job description? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, that will be much more definitive. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your service. <laughs> the one that, that I was um, Are you implying you that you could drive a truck through the description of your job? Yeah. Currently, got it. Okay. Yeah, maybe it works. Um, it, it's just a draft. It's it's just a compilation of what's been done and what's out there for job descriptions to strengthen the, the description. Okay. Let me just say that. There it is. Yeah, I noticed. I think the other question I would have is, does it, um, should we get the ball rolling by getting the job posted and so that the resumes are, so that people are already starting to think about applying while the committee gets organized? I don't think it's really necessary for the committee to be thinking about how to post the job or where to post it. No, they shouldn't be. Yeah. Shouldn't have to, they, they shouldn't they, have to worry about that. They don't have a budget mm -hmm. to do the posting. Yeah. That's true. And um, I was and, working and we've time. recently gained lots of experience in posting job description. <laughs> job, job. Um. How, about sal how about salary data? So what we've done with the other positions, because it's not in the um, user and budget cycle, is that the current What's been put on that is that the current appropriation for the position is, and then fill in the blank with whatever the job is. And then um, subject to I mean, wages, yeah, well, it says that that's always a thing, right? Yeah. So wages commensurate with experience subject to town meeting appropriation. Which you would, you would get to that point with the, your application. And then when you contract with them, whatever you contract with them, negotiate, you would that would be in their contract subject to town meeting approval. Okay. So. so we might have to have a special for that. Maybe. I don't know. Unless we have it in time for the <laughs> annual. <laughs> screen applicants, pre-interview, check references, that sort of thing? Or would you rather have, how do you want to do that? So, screen applicants would give you the three or four top, whatever yeah. your top pick on, right? Yeah, yeah. the charge was to recommend two or three. Okay. And that's and then, what we did last and time. And then 
once you've got your two or three, I would, I would recommend that you have um, HRD background check. Background checks or any any more in depth right. background checking because you don't want to um, do too much of a deep dive on people you're not even going to consider. I mean, the other option is, and we typically do it in the reverse order, but it might be, it might be wise to, um, to have them give the two or three recommendations, have our HR do um, reference checks, mm -hmm. or have one of us do reference checks before the interviews, um, and then decide whom, whom to, to interview. That's actually a, a really good approach. Yeah. yeah. I I because think so that, too. Some people might self-filter with their references. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it makes sense to for the screening committee to winnow it down, and then to check and then to do a deeper look at the what the screening committee is doing a final consideration before coming to us for interviews. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the job description as it was sent to us on Monday. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had read through it before. So. Um, now we would now in order to write up the ad for it, it wouldn't be the full job description, but we could no, it would it would say the full job description is available anywhere. Yeah, and it would it would have the um, rough rough idea of what it is. People who are applying for a town administrator's job and don't know what the job is, maybe should rethink application. Well, yeah. um, but that's but a whole other story for another day. <laughs> yeah. So it, typically, it's a blur. The position is open. Here's where the job description is. The job description contains mm -hmm. the salary, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> the information that you contact, the select board office, where you want their residents to go. It would make sense to go to Karen mm -hmm. um, as a central clearinghouse because it's the town email. She yep. can then distribute. So resumes are not public, right? Mm -hmm. So so they have to be handled as such. Yep. So when they got them, then she can get the copies out to the appropriate people. Okay. So I think from a process perspective, so first of all, what, I'm going to make a motion that we accept the job description as provided. Second. All right. All in favor of accepting the uh, job description as provided, please say aye. 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 Okay. So... I think procedurally, what the recommendation that I heard is that we would uh, post with the, our, our administrative assistant's email address as the send to address. Mm -hmm. That Karen shall act as a clearinghouse for those resumes and forward them to the appropriate persons. Now, even though we have a screening committee, personally, I would like a copy of all resumes submitted. How do you all feel about it? I'm coming different. I hadn't thought about it. I right now I don't have a strong feeling either way. Okay. I mean, but we're there, there's nothing wrong with you getting copies of the residents. So if you yeah. want them, then there's nothing wrong with you asking for them. And if anybody else wants them, okay. we can ask. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. You don't yeah. actually need to take the vote. That's okay. That's great. Okay. So. Do we need anything else that we would need to vote on or discuss procedurally relative to this? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I think, I think we would just, I mean, I think our intention is we would uh, advertise locally in the paper, put it in Indeed. We need to, do we need to talk go, about where we would have The small, lists. yeah, small town yeah, administrators. Yeah, I've already actually no. given them a heads up. That Did you find any? Did you find anyone? No. Actually, no. I've <laughs> been hired a couple of people and, and they've been around for a while, so. Um, they've been quiet. Yeah. Interesting. I, I suspect they're wondering what the job description's going to look like. That's their first check. I know. I think they're probably more interested in what the reality on the ground looks like <laughs> if I were. Well, well, the job description, <laughs> well, but, but I think the job description is easier for them to look at and then say, nope, or say, yeah, let's find out what it's so like. There's on the a ground. point in every industry where you start picking your next boss. So, mm -hmm. 
I would suspect most of the people who would be looking at Brookfield are either at the very beginning of their career or the very end of their career. The very mm -hmm. beginning of their career because they need to break in and the very end of their career because they're downsizing from some larger community to something they think. Mostly I've been asked what the hours are. Yeah. Nobody's asking what the salary is. Everybody's like, how many hours do you do? Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's... Uh, all right, so is there anything else we would need to discuss around that for right now? I don't think so. I think the long pole in the tent with the job description and how we were going to screen the applicants. And that's why I know, I know, we, I know we've been a long meeting with advisory, but I didn't want to let that ride another two weeks. Okay. I thought it important that we discuss it now. All right, nothing else on that one. Agenda item number two, police department insulation engineering quote in your packet. So um, I went to, I did the RFP, I had the RFP done for this project, sent the information over, and town council recommended an engineer. I reached out to, because we don't have the um, calculations for what's required for the insulation. So I reached out to the engineer, met with them. Um, when I, because I'm leaving, I asked them for a full, this is what, we need somebody to come in, meet with the contractors, do the site visit and over, oversee the project. Mm -hmm. We don't have anybody here who can actually do that in the construction trade, right? So this is what they so this is them doing everything, soup to them doing everything. They do the procurement, they do the vetting, they do, they come out and they oversee the job, and they button up the job. Okay, and do we have any budget line item that we could actually charge for these services? The point? money for the project that we get is, that, that, that's please, wait, um, that the board had approved from the Arkham. Is there enough money in that um, that no we set idea. aside? We have no quotes. Okay. Without quotes on the job, I can't possibly. And and I specifically asked the RFP to be written for um, strapping and fiberglass batting. And the reason being, it's the least expensive and it's tried and true. Mm -hmm. It doesn't compress. You're not going to need to replace it in ten years. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas with the colonial cellulose insulation, it compresses and loses its R value over time. Yeah. And then some of the colonial uh, insulation can be used to fill in the edges because it's a truss roof. So things aren't necessarily going to fit in between. You're going to have the truss. Mm -hmm. And then the um, strapping will be underneath the trusses. So you put the pieces in and then they'll be cutting to add the pieces over the top to reach the proper R value over the top of the truss wood. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with trusses? Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> so there's there's some bizarre calculations, but it, this also includes full removal of the current membrane and system that's there. So I don't know if they can reuse the. the what, do, what do you mean? Sunrise. The eighteen thousand covers that? No, no, no. Oh. This, uh, this, this is, is just managing this project. is the outsource manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the proposal from uh, Dario Designs. Second. Okay. All right, and so now we do this. Basically, we have a an agent that can does everything. Okay. They do everything. All right, and then it's just then if we then when we go out to bid. Okay. Well, okay. Well, when it goes out to bid, mm -hmm. but we, it's like, if the bids come in such that this contract mm -hmm. and the, the winning bid exceed the amount of money we set aside or that we reserve, whatever, whatever the right word is, then we're not able to accept the bid until we top up the, uh, the allocated money. Correct. Because we can't accept a bid until we have definitive, do we have locked in funding for it. Correct. Would, okay. it be, would it be if left in ARPA again? Or if you don't know it up, it's not critical for right now. I think I, I think <laughs> I think all the money category, I, um, I think all the ARPA yeah. money Actually, has been do that. The one who keeps track of it is Kathy. It's Kathy. Kathy. Yes. It's Kathy. It's Kathy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me make a note to ask Kathy what we have left. She's 
She's the one who submits all the bills and has yeah. everything that's in okay. flux and stuff. Lori only has what's actually processed. Gotcha. So. Yeah. But I think that's the, um, with that, I think we have identified use for all the ARPA money. We and have. And so I think the question is how much. And I believe we have some left over from the painting upstairs because I asked for a buffer in case there was an unforeseen amount. Expense. It wasn't a lot. It was only like $2,000. Mm -hmm. But that can be reallocated to this project if necessary. I think okay. it's and then, aside and then, and then I know we were talking after the last meeting, and I think for the for the police station, we had someone volunteer to be our agent, right? When we built the police station ten years ago. So we had included in the police station planning for the funding a twenty percent management premium, but I think mostly that management was was that mostly handled by Bill as as owner. Bill did. I think Bill Simpson may have actually acted as our agent for most of that project. Oh, yeah. My, my yeah, recollection so. is that it was so. Mm -hmm. Homes, homes, homes. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, he was on the committee at the time. He was one of the committee members. Mm -hmm. So, who I think is also a licensed contractor. Mm -hmm. So. And so. And I know it's like I, it's like in what we don't have is somebody who's licensed for the procurement to evaluate the. the you courts. allocated eighty thousand for this project. Yeah. So. And we think it's probably going to be. I think we'll fifty. Probably, I think well with the engineering costs, I think we'll be within budget, but I yeah. think we'll be close. Yeah, I, I figure probably seventy-five-ish. Mm -hmm. So. And so. The, and so Mr. Holm was a, uh, so Kelly, is this contract for um, putting it out to bid is um, for, for bid, procure, and construction supervision? No, that's all right. Okay, I'm not sure. And then Mr. Holm, for the police station project, Mr. Holm was construction supervision, for want of a better term, but was not engineering or bid procurement, is my understanding. Uh, Mr. Taft, you were involved. Do you, can you clarify that? Or do you I was have, not involved. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. I'm just I have a question if I may. Um, no. No. Rather not. Okay. I'm just trying to understand how much of this project, it's like, so how much of I this. Mean, the tasks are very well enumerated within the documentation. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm they're, just trying very, to they're very specific and they're very well enumerated. It includes having an owner project manager soup mm -hmm. to nuts beginning to end. Yep. Right? No. I, yeah, what I'm trying to understand is the. Um, it's like task six, oversee project during construction. That's the yeah. task that Mr. Holm did first for the police station. Correct. And so, and that's like one of six tasks. So I'm trying to understand how much scope is there to, would there be to reduce the cost of this contract to be brought in? It looks like there's not a lot. I think it looks like most of the cost is front loaded. I think if we start parsing it out, they're going to start raising their rates on the that's, portions that are remaining because yes. they don't have the control. And, and also we deal with, um, more responsibility spread out wider, more cracks for things to fall into. Yes. So, yeah, and so, that, and so I, I'm And if converged. something goes wrong, we can come at them. Yeah. A single throat <laughs> to choke. Yeah, okay, that's, <laughs> no, I, I, it's like, I just wanted to make sure that it's like that this, this the, the entirety of this contract wasn't something that someone, we'd already the, had someone the, do the for only, us. The only thing that I would hold off from a standpoint of saying yes today is if we're really concerned about the details, then we need to ask for the copy of the A1A B105 contract between architect and owner if you're concerned about what the details of the contract entail and what mm -hmm. their liability is for negligence or malfeasance. Mm -hmm. Right? No. But um, if, unless we're planning on reviewing that in detail or having KP review it before we accept the bid, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the bid as presented. All right. I think that's already, bids are, that motion's already been made, and I was just asking some questions. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm done with my part of the discussion. Anyone else? No? Nope. All right. Um, all in favor of accepting the proposal from Dario Designs for, where's that cost? For $18,740 for, um, uh, to be owner's project manager and engineering procurement and oversight of the project at the police station, please say aye. 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 
All right, thank you. So that is approved. Uh, next up, permit eyes. Okay. Um, I, we asked Jacob to come uh, for this part because this also encompasses the security camera question that you and I had discussed, Tom. Um, mm -hmm. um, in the tech budget, there is an amount for replacing the cameras here and for the um, Highway department? Highway department. In fiscal year 25? Correct. Okay. However, because it seemed to be, you wanted to do it sooner, there was some um, we were looking for funding. Permit eyes is something that the town voted for and if the quotes had come in a little bit lower I would have recommended that you get the cameras first and then do the permanent <coughs> afterwards. However, they're not even. They don't match. The bulk in are high for the cameras. Um, and so I'm suggesting that since the town, we specifically ask for permit eyes at the town meeting. So it, it would be consistent. be consistent to sign the contract for the implementation now because the amount of the conversion to permit eyes, and this is their out of the box, this is their out of the box um, service. There's no customization whatsoever. The customization was phenomenally expensive. This will get the system converted and up and running with the first year starting in the next fiscal year. So um, the cost for the service will be split between the two years as opposed to one big chunk in one year. I know there's been a lot of positive feedback on this from multiple boards. Not all, but... Um, what are the yays and what are the nays? <laughs> well, the yays are that nobody has to look for photocopies of anything. Mm -hmm. Everything is available and visible um, in permit eyes to all the departments. So if somebody, and, and it's real time, so if the data is entered and there's a permit, Board of Health can see right. that there's a permit and that, that there's going to be a, a, a well that's going to be. And, gas, and, and, and there's accountability, and there's, right. and there's yeah. plenty, right. and there's good accountability from a standpoint of. From the contractors and the resident side, they can do everything online. They don't have to come to the town hall. They can pay online. They can upload all of their data online. Um, they can, I mean, they can still absolutely come to the town hall if, they, if that, they're more comfortable with that. But it's not going to be a requirement. Brandon can look and see if the taxes are paid uh, on, the, on the properties instantly. She doesn't have to wait for copies. And, and you, every, it's just, it's so right there at your fingertips. And it, and it makes the permitting process accessible. So it would be building, um, plumbing, and electrical. And it makes the permitting process accessible all the time. The inspectors will have a little bit of a learning curve. They're going to have to check their email. But if I am you know, an insomniac, and I want to file my permit information, my permit papers. At three I can do that at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, it's not going to get checked until the inspector gets to it. Right. But I have that option. I can also pay for my permit based on the permit fees. And then the, the inspector can look at it and say, this is missing, and put it on still, hold. Still right. put it on hold and, and put reject it, on hold. it or whatever. So, so when they upload the data, they'll get a notification that the data has been uploaded. So it's actually a pretty comprehensive system. Um, and the downside is that the learning curve for the inspectors. Um, but the assessor's office won't have to look for permits. They will always know if there's, and it'll help with the growth because nothing will get missed. Okay. Um, and like I said, conservation will be able to go, hey, I know that lot, that lot's got water on it. I'm going to have to see if, uh, let them know that this is something that you need to have them come before. So it gives us kind of like a, 
a window into what's happening for each of the departments. And if they want, if they can see that there's something that might need to be addressed, then they can be proactive as opposed to having a, a resident wait for um, months to find out, like, okay, so they went to the ZBA and, and they didn't know that they had to go to conservation because they found one spotted lizard in their backyard. And there's a vermal pool there that they weren't aware of. Or they didn't not even know what a vermal pool is. So it's, it's just a really nice, cohesive way for everybody to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, I did, a, I did a quick rundown of the numbers. And uh, check my numbers, Kelly, is that it no, looks like the... <laughs> That's why she went to law school. That's right. Haven't you been listening so, for the last three years? Because I'm, because I'm, because I'm, I'm looking and it's, it's like the, the one-off cost is in. The, I have it in the twenty-two to twenty-three thousand dollar range, and the recurring cost I have at about twelve thousand for everything that they quoted us. We're not doing everything that they okay. quoted. Did you not see that those are optional? I are optional no, I did not. I, I, I was scanning. <laughs> no, I was it's roughly going five thousand dollars. Okay. So it's five thousand three hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah, okay, right. so just yeah, so, so the 30, is, is 30, the one okay, so, okay, so with all yeah. in it's that much, but for for the basic, it's fifty three hundred one off and thirty nine, uh, okay. not quite thirty nine hundred dollars recurring. Yes. yes. Okay. So we would put the thirty nine in the budget for FY twenty five. Right. And we would do the five for this year because that's what we budgeted was was mm -hmm. roughly five for the conversion. And the payment program. Is not included. Um, yeah, the payment. I saw the payment API was optional. Right. Yeah, per, we only have one payment. Currently, we only have one payment. Just with the service, building. Which is, yeah. which is for yeah, Unibank. Unibank? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, provided that Unibank can provide service through this, we'd be looking at one nine hundred dollar setup fee for the for linking the online payment. But that again is, is optional and it can, it can be done afterwards. Yep. So. Maybe after we see how it's going. Mm hmm. I would recommend just getting it into the 25 right. budget. Give them six months, get a feedback report from them. And no. No. No, because here's the thing. It, it's the ability to give the payments online that's going to drive people to use it. As much as getting the paperwork submitted is at least you know that you've got your thing in process. If you still know you've got to get the payment in the hands of the inspector mm. for the person that's trying to streamline it or the or the contractor that's technically starting from out of town, you're going to be able to like collect the fees and move stuff along way better. It's it's a very reasonable investment to go ahead and just plan to do the nine hundred dollars oh, at least at the okay. at the you know at worst case scenario when we're plan whenever it is we're planning on paying the annual payment is to include the API integration then which. I mean, it might technically be six months down the line at this point, but uh, honestly, I'd almost want prefer to have that done. If we can find the extra nine hundred dollars, I would say you do that as part of the, the right. initial implementation. Yeah. I, I would not want to wait for the online payment integration. So. I mean, if you look at the databases, there was a while ago that they're holding, they're holding their prices they're holding for us. Price for us. Yeah. So do you want to make a... I'll make a motion that we um, do... Well, I do have one question. Do we have enough money to do both the one-time and the $900 for the API? We did. Left in the tech budget? Okay. But let's <coughs> make a motion that we do the um, initial um, setup fee portion of the permit eyes for the $5,300 for creating the building, the program building module, um, as well as the online payment integration for $900 to be the initial phase of instituting permit eyes on the FY24 budget um, with uh, the intent to include the annual fee of $3,865 as part of our 2025 budget. Second. All right, um, and 
for the a, for the uh, nine hundred dollar payment to API, do we want to ex do we, should we modify the motion to include that also? I'm sorry. I, I heard the I heard the thirty. The, I, yeah, the, the yeah, that's, I missed the payment part. And the API to be done on the okay. twenty four budget, and the right. and the other to be done on the twenty five budget. Okay, and then my my one que my question becomes thirty eight something. Thirty eight sixty five. And that's already in the budget. It was yes, right. it was in my estimate. Um, yeah. but I wasn't sure if you were, what you were going to do right. with this, so um, we we're going to bump it up to next year too. Mm -hmm. So I just lowered the amount in the request. Okay. Um, Kelly, the all this information is going to reside in Permit Eyes system, right, mm -hmm. and be available online. Okay. Um, do we have the ability to pull that information out? What happens if three years down the line we're unhappy with Permit Eyes? How do we get the information so we have our all our all our permit details in our own hands? They could probably drop it in a CSV and throw it over to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to pull that information out if necessary. I know that the the, the reason I bring this up is the uh, the example is um, people. Um, I'll say, I'll use online games. People bought online copies of games, or they bought online copies of movies, like rent uh, that DVD on with your town webs, your, your town email with um, Civic Plus. Mm -hmm. They gave us back some of the emails, and then held them as hostage. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, this has, this has the ability to print them off. Okay. We can make paper copies. So that if, if in the, in the, uh, Desperate eventuality, we'll be able to get all our data out of the system and file it away and have it and be able to meet our retention. Re thank you, retention requirements. Okay, thank you. That, that was my concern. That was the concern I wanted to address. All right. Any other concerns? All right. All in favor of the uh, motion to uh, move forward with permit eyes for the town uh, as moved by Beth, please say aye. 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 All right. That was approved. And then. All right, and then tied in uh, town hall, my uh, the the um, the security system. I just want to talk about this quickly because we're up against seven o'clock with the advisory committee here. Um, is that um, I am I feel strongly that we should try to address this sooner rather than later. And if that and because my I from I've talked to Jacob about this, and his indication to me is that. We could, as an initial step, replace the server that record, does all the recording and move forward with our existing cameras. And then we could replace the cameras at a future time. How hard is it to pull the data off of the new server? Is it Microsoft compatible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you put in there, replace would be. Yes. Um, I didn't get into technical details with Jacob, but he did indicate that. Um, it would be modern and convenient, and the data would be available, and we would not, he would not have to put on his um, his gray hat hacker's hat to uh, in order to uh, extract our data from the server we own because it's an older server. And so um, I would I would uh, and we sent that out today. Did we already have this in the budget? What you put it. It is not in the budget as I understand it. It is. <clears throat> and looking at the expenditure, why is it? Oh, this is all backwards. Um, no, not until some, to like recess this one. And the email. And unfortunately, Kelly sent it to my personal email, and I forwarded it to me. You did. That's why I couldn't find it. That's why I was. That's why I couldn't find it when I was looking for it the other day. It's like because I was looking in my town email account, and when I forwarded it on, it looks like Jacob's part was not um, was trimmed off. So I have to 
find my personal email. Actually, I can find that. What but I, I believe I'm looking for the cost of the server replacement, and That's I right. believe it's in the. Oh, you have a printout. Okay, thank you. How much is it, Jeff? Brad. Uh, Brad. <laughs> uh, call it forty-seven fifty. Forty-seven fifty. To uh, to get us one that has a um, that is fully legally that that meets the legal requirements of such a system. And I think that's, a, and so I'm interested in doing that, though I think to do that, we would have to, uh, we might have to look for a, uh, either the um, reserve fund or wait until transfers open up, because I don't think there's room in the budget, there's not room in the operating budget as it is now, but I think this is important for us to do. And call it 5100 is what the cameras are. Yeah, and I think the cameras were a separate expense, and they, they are separable. We can replace the server and keep the existing cameras, and then we can replace the cameras at a future time. We can look to do that in the upcoming fiscal year 25 budget, either through the operating budget or through a warrant article. Can you just repeat the number? Sorry. Um, I believe it's uh, about $4,000 for the server, and then which... I, am, I feel it's something that should be done this year, and then the canvas could be deferred to a future year at about $5,000. I just um, want to make sure I heard you right. No, that's fine. That's, fine. That, that, that's a fair question. I was talking in that direction. <laughs> um, Beth and Brad, <clears throat> is there any interest on your part of doing this, or, are we, or should we just slot this in for uh, addressing at annual town meetings? If we can identify a budget that we can support the new server from, I would support pursuing the new server with this year's funds. Okay. My instinct is to, I, I consider this an unexpected expense, so I think the reserve, the reserve fund, fund is, a, is a suitable s funding for this. Yep. And, and therefore, um, I think, uh, so I think... So I'd like a motion to move forward this with a uh, with a request to the advisory committee for um, allocation of reserve fund for this so project. Moved. Second. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. And let's see. All right. And item number agenda item number five was intended if we had time to be allow us to talk about the budget before we went joint with advisory, but. It's 7.05 and advisory's here, so um, I'll take a motion to pass over agenda item number five. So moved. Second. All in favor of passing over number five, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. And now we have a joint meeting with advisory committee. Jeff, would you bring yourself to order, please? Can we take like a two-minute recess? Sure. Uh, yes. Um, I declare a two-minute two two minute recess of... The I'll try to be quick. Yeah. About that. Right. No, that's fine. Right. Uh, we will return in two minutes and reconvene, and advisor will be ready to convene with us. All right. Thank you, everybody. Our recess is over. I bring the uh, select board meeting into session, and the advisory committee has already called themselves to order. So we are ready for our joint meeting to discuss the budget. Uh, let's see. Jeff, do you guys want to start? Yeah. Or? I had a couple of introductory or just whatever global comments and then if each one of our people wanted to say something fine otherwise just you know we can go back and forth but um, we're I guess a couple of months into the process we've gone through about half of the departments um, the two issues we've seen is that again you know with the police uh, union contract negotiations uh, ongoing um, we're going to have to put a you know placeholder in for estimated uh, salaries or wages, and then with the elementary school, uh, we just met with uh, Deb Boyd and the um, Chris, uh, the finance, the new finance person there, and the uh, the budget was um, significantly higher than has been presented in previous years. So again, I need to ask you know. Kelly, or during the discussion, as far as because you've given me a levy limit number prior, but it was based on level funding, I think. So, with this higher number, we're going to have to figure out which where we are. Um, but it was based, I think, because of a couple of um, um, families with special education needs that increased, uh, that moved into town and radically increased the cost of uh, um, 
that particular service is provided. And then um, third thing, as we've gone through uh, the budgets and also using the salary um, wage sheets that, that um, the selectmen had requested um, that we got a little bit earlier, uh, and, and we've determined that, that everyone is still all over the board, each department is all over the board as far as COLA and or wage increase and everything else. So the numbers range anywhere from 0% level funded up to, I think it's 8.9%. 8, 8 um, so we, as a committee, have talked about it. We haven't set a COLA recommendation yet, but we're feeling that we should come to a decision fairly quickly to sort of let the municipal employees know more or less what 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 they should be expecting, and I say that basically because of you know the police and the elementary school budgets also, which are going to be higher than what we'd anticipated. So it's it's going to be, I think, something that the selectmen might need to say something. I mean, that's my own personal opinion. I don't know if everyone did, else feels did, that way. Did we vote anything previously? Um, I believe in the past we voted our we declared an intention for three percent this year. But I don't. I, th I think that's what we did. I thought we had set it as a. I thought we set that as a minimum. I don't know that we had said that that's what it was going to be. That could it could very well be that's that. How I, I, that's I think, how I, think, I recall it. I, I, it. We may have declared an intention of at least three. And what did we do last year? I believe we did three percent. I would have to check our numbers. Jeff, do you remember what we did for COVID last year? Three or three and a half. Oh, three and a half. Okay. Was, 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 the, it, was, was it was it three or three and a half? I get the years confused, I apologize, but um, I, I know we normally, again, we're normally going, the advisory committee's recommendation is normally under what is actually voted on in the selectmen mm -hmm. request, just because we're looking at it from a fiscal standpoint, and um, I know we were less than what the selectmen had, had, had uh, requested. Um, but this year, as I said, we're, we're, we're we haven't made a decision, but I think we're right around that area. You know, again, but I think it should come from, we need to make a final determination, I think, fairly quickly, because as I said, people are out there thinking they're they're gonna get whatever the COLA was to, you know, they didn't get the COLA, the eight point, I forget, what was the number? It was 8.9 8. 8. 8. last year. Right, and, and people are still, they want that somehow put into this year's COLA, mm -hmm. and that's just not, realistic from what we're looking at, given all of the expenses that, that have accrued. So I, I think that there's there should be some public, whatever, dissemination that, that that's just not going to be possible this year. Jeff, Jeff, with perspective, in our meeting with Deb Boyd, I remember her talking about the colas that were given for teacher salaries for the past few years. Do you remember that part? Because it struck me. She said they were two and three percent. Correct. Right. Right. They're they're. But yeah. those but those those raises are contractually obligated, and I don't know when the teachers you when the teachers contract renews. But I I want to say it happened there, there in twenty one, and that there and so therefore those raises were contractually agreed to well uh, before we had the the the, the recent uh, squeeze on prices. Right, and so, and so therefore, I, I'm not sure. I'm, so you when you when you go through the tables, even though it looks like three percent, when you go through between their step and 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 yes. cola, it's close. It's it typically <coughs> between five and seven and a half percent. Yeah, that's depending my on where they are. Tables. I'm right. not talking the. Uh, you mean the teachers? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, the the, yeah. the ones with the union representatives. Right. I mean, I, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but I just think that every year I say the same thing. I think that. Someone, the selectman, town administrator, so, whoever, should just so, get out in front of it and say something so that we're not down to the town meeting where people are having just totally different so, expectations so I, as far as what's going to be. I'm going to make. I'm going to make. I'd like to make a proposal that we target four percent for the municipal employees. So, um, because we, it was the cola for Fed was. 8.9 last year, and I think we did three. Uh, it's 3.3 this year, 
if they're looking for us to do these, any amount of catch up, I think that's the best that we could do. I think that's the highest we've ever historically gone, except for the times when we did the the column center adjustments. Yeah, and that wasn't a cola. That was a that was a that was a market adjustment. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, I I think it would if we if we think we can swing it, and I don't know what that'll do to our numbers, but I'd like to see the budget worked out at least at four percent, but. I mean that's a pro that's a proposal. I can make a motion. If you guys don't agree, then we can start working through the numbers until we get to something that we agree on from a select board proposal perspective. Well, I think before we do that, Beth, I think there's two other significant issues we've got to address. The one was the longevity bonus yeah. that went through last year. Um, on one hand, as agreed to by folks here, the part the, the full times, and then on the Tommy and Floor, you know, included all the part times, which again, I have no issues with. But I guess the, 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 the my understanding is that's a one time event and we're not looking to do that again. Would that be an accurate uh, statement? That's what I thought it was supposed to be. It was a one time. That's not, no. that's not the way it's written. No. That's, no, no, that's no, not I, the way the hand yeah. No, no, and I don't mean like a, you know, we may not need to do it again in the future. I'm just saying, I'm just wanting to set the expectation that. If it happens, it happens after a conversation with lots of people, and the town says, yep, we think we need it again. But it's not an automatic every year. I guess that's what I'm trying to well, get to. It is not automatic because, I, if I recall correctly, it was it was funded through a warrant article. And through, by well, a for, the, for the temporary workers, but the other one. Well, and I, and my recollection is that not temporary workers, it, the, what went to the floor was full-time employees. And okay. then it was modified on the floor to include the emergency services workers, specifically, I believe that was specifically the, uh, the fire department and the emergency department. Um, since they, uh, they are, uh, they, they don't, most of them are not full time, but they have been, a lot of them have been with the town for a long time. And the, and the, the town meeting agreed to extend the longevity bonuses to uh, those people. Okay, and all the background is somewhat immaterial. My, my, my point, though, is that it was a one-time event until such time that the town thinks we need to do it again. And whether or not it shows up on town warrant is possibly out of the control of the slipper, but I'm saying it's not something we would expect in. I think that's... Well, I believe the... Kelly, what, is our, what does the employee handbook say on the matter? Okay, so I think that's the, the employee, source. you're absolutely... I don't know who you are. That's Tim Brown. Tim Brown. Okay. Um, Tim is absolutely right. First of oh, all, the employee handbook is not a contract. So this would come before the town, provided that it is something that can feasibly, feasibly be funded within the levy unit. So it's your call every year if you want to do it or not. It's not an automatic. Um, and and he's, he's absolutely right. So the, the way the employee handbook is written is that it would begin in FY24, um, because I, as I stated, it's not a contract. You are not required to put this on the warrant every single year, but you have the option to do so. Okay, thank you. That answers that uh, my first concern. Second concern was um, obviously we can't control what happens on the common floor either, right? But the, but the challenge from Tom Morrell is, is pretty uh, high, as you folks understand, is if people are all getting X percent and someone steps up on town meeting and suggests one individual or group should get a lot more, then that causes real angst and that's part of our problem now is that that expectation from others was, well, someone got a bunch more money than the rest of us. How does, and I understand the personnel board for some reason has been dismayed so trying to manage that's going to be more challenging. But I guess in order to go along with best suggestions, 4 percent, I would want to have some um, you know, understanding or some level of assurance amongst ourselves that in, at town meeting, we will specifically argue against those things because they're, you know, it, it gets out of control. I mean, is that your same opinion of the select board? I'm assuming it is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, other, other than I would, I would, I don't see it as out of control. I see it as putting additional strain on the budget. It's no, because no, no, it's no. within because no, it's within. No, I, I think he means no, you more the point. wild, the wild west aspect of town yes. meeting. It starts. The, the, to, it oh, starts the, the unplanned get, aspect. Yes. Oh, yeah. or, or, and, okay. And, that's that. Uh, thank especially you. the with, one that's with that way out of line with everyone else. Yeah. Looking, looking at it, uh, yes, with uncontrolled meaning unplanned. Yes, I agree. 
Yeah, I don't think you're going to see any member of the select board pulling what got pulled at town meeting with a member of the select board proposing an indivi one individual for the... No, I wouldn't think that that would happen either. What I'm suggesting is that we have a very strong united yeah. argument to try to make sure... That you, yes. I, I expect that I will be more ready to deal with that eventuality should it happen this time right. around. Uh, does the compensation scale for longevity differentiate between full and part-time? The handbook said it is only for full-time employees, and they changed it on the floor. But but is there a different scale for part-time employees? If no, not, because it's not supposed so. to get it. It's not. So. So they're not supposed. They're not even on the scale. The part-time employees are not even on but, the scale. So so Marty, no, answer your question. A full-time employee with five years of service got X dollars. A part-time employee, if they were included in the longevity bonus, got that same X dollars. So does that answer your question? That does answer my question. So what are we going to do about that? Is that fair? Um, do the, we need a change to the compensation scale? Marty, the employee handbook only specifies full-time employees. The change was made on the floor. That change was not in our control. That change was not initiated by us. So that is, it's like, so whether it's fair or not, there's nothing in the policy or in what we proposed on the floor last year that was un, that could be considered that I would consider unfair. Right, and so the scenario, the biggest scenario that we have is we've got two choices, right? Either we put it on the warrant or we don't put it on the warrant. If we don't put it on the warrant, given that it's an annual town meeting, there's always the risk of exposure that somebody will citizen petition it onto the warrant, okay? So one of the things, to your point, and it's probably a, a, one that has merit, okay, is we probably should put on a future agenda for us, since we don't have a select, since we don't have a personnel board anymore, mm -hmm. to put discrete rates for part-time versus full-time folks, or just take the longevity thing out. Now, one of the things I would recommend before we do that is to do a survey of other communities within the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. comparable communities, comparable communities, to say, do they have a longevity bonus or not? If they have it, what are they? Okay, because at the end of the day, we are. I know people will say it's Brookfield's budget. Brookfield can do stuff different. You know what? Yes, we are free to do stuff different. But we are we are competing in a Commonwealth market for quality employees. So we need to take a look at our full compensation package. Okay, I get the constraints. I'm a taxpayer too. I don't want to see my shit go up either. But at the end of the day, right. We, we also owe a certain level of service and a certain level of, of, of <coughs> quality of candidate as we have vacancies. I look at it this way. If you pay crap, you get crappy employees. To be blunt. Well, we've been actually very fortunate given how we pay in this town. Uh, yes, I, 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 so. we, we are, and but we've also been, we've also seen that in some, in the past. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Not a, I would not think that's a, a present situation. So. Um, so I think I think that's those are some of the questions we need to ask ourselves. I, I do appreciate what Marty is saying. Is I think if we're going to leave it in the handbook, if we do the survey of the communities and it stays in the handbook that we do um, longevity bonuses, we should have a different scale for part time versus full time because it at least lowers our exposure on the town floor mm -hmm. relative to you know it being scaled appropriately for folks who are full time versus part time. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you, Matt. I, I can sort of. So just, just the one other thing to sort of wrap that up. Again, I was talking about sort of the, the level or theory of, of expectations here. So that's the other thing that we've heard, which is why I think Tim brought it up, was that people were, maybe they misinterpreted or didn't hear that it was a one-time longevity thing. Now they're, they're sort of thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to get longevity again this year, too. And I noticed that. I know the library is a separate situation, but there's something in there uh, that I guess they had, had voted that there's a longevity for the for the library uh, director. So again, it's that, contracted. That right, contracted. Like so again, that might cause some of yeah. the confusion. But again, there's a couple of different things going on. So people say, "Well, geez, okay, we've got longevity again this year." So these are things that I'm just 
as we're going through the, the weeds, just trying to let you guys know that, you know, there probably needs to be something stated as far as this, because the salaries and the wages are always a very, you know, important issue. And um, so that was the extent of my general comments. And I think Sarah had one or two questions. I don't know, Bob, do you have, you know what I think? Okay. Um, I just had a question about the highway superintendent and where it stood. I saw it got reposted. So I just didn't know if it was a discussion of topic of not having one or if it was a discussion ever or is it, where does the wage stand and how much? The, the highway department the, super, the superintendent of the highway department has an allocated line item in the budget for this year. And so that is that controls how much we could pay someone coming in this year. Uh, if we, since we are budgeting to fiscal year 25, if we think it necessary, we could reconsider the number or okay. we could just put a, put a cola on it. Um, and my recollection of the board's discussions is that the board intends to hire a permanent highway superintendent. Okay. We uh, have we have not yet found someone that we feel is the right fit for the position, and so therefore we are continuing the search. And does, did I misrepresent our thoughts on the matter? I just, okay. Okay. Right. Did that, are, are you answered? Yes, I am answered, yes. <coughs> okay. Oh, oh, and the Excel spreadsheet, so I do have a question too. So, I am, obviously new to the advisory committee so uh, they lost Caitlin so I am bringing my iPad to the meetings now and I don't know if we can unlock the Excel spreadsheet so we can and have our own column you have your own column and it's not locked so like the version I have is locked so can I get it so can you I don't know how you got one because I've never locked the column that is the advisory's column it's, it's not locked. All right. So, like, so I meet with me and I'll, we'll, we'll work on okay. it. Okay. Just, just to clarify that, I think, I think we just, you know, you just go around the spreadsheet and it looks locked everywhere. But you're saying there is one column. There is, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. after the green, there are two columns that, that are uh, present. The first column is advisory. You can put whatever you want in there. In the, fir in the first, yeah, in the first one, right? right? And then the, the rest are locked, yes. yes. Okay, yes, yeah. yeah. I, I only left that unlocked so you could do whatever you, if you wanted. If you wanted, okay, so our, okay, so the only column that we can edit is that first column on the yes. first page, on the first cell, okay. Yeah, okay, it, yeah. okay, and then let me just nail that down. So the essentially summation sheet, there's a there's a column we can that's unlocked, yes, but the underlying sheets, that's not the case, correct? Yes, because those are what the committees presented. So everything is linked okay. and everything okay. feeds yeah, 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 yeah. from no, the I, 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 to yep, no, 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 I get what you're saying. So you want everything to go into the first section into the columns for us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Column H of the this FY25 25, sheet. Yeah, sheet. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I, I just checked the version that I have, uh, that column is unlocked. I was able to put a number in. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, so no, I was off something that got so, accomplished tonight. So can, can I ask a I'm sorry. Can I ask a I'm sorry, uh, go, ahead, go ahead and then I'll tell you. Okay. So I know, and this is going to be a slightly off topic. Well, not it's not off topic, it's off the flow of the conversation. But I, I keep hearing people say, well, we can't plan because we don't have the contracts yet, so we're just going to level fund. That's, to me, a nonsensical stance. My recommendation would be, for planning purposes, that we take a look at what previous contracts have yielded on the police contract, which generally speaking is roughly 5% a year, okay? Knowing that... So then we're, I, I get where you're going. You, you get where I'm going. Mm. We, we roll 5% into this year's budget, right? Because mm. we didn't, and I don't think we made any adjustment on this year's budget because we didn't have a contract then either. Compound at 5% for this year coming, and I think that that will at least get us close enough that that will be in the right neighborhood. And for a planning factor perspective, mm -hmm. it will it will put us in a position where we're not going to have an oh crap and might even alleviate the, the cost and, and complexity of a special town meeting. 
or you might no, not need to do one. That's what I'm that's saying. Yeah, it's helpful and because we were going to assume a number, right? We didn't yeah. go with thanks for the five percent. Yeah. But we were going to just do that because we knew we couldn't do anything else. Yeah. Later, but you got to do um, something. Yeah. And historically speaking, and I don't know where it's going to land, right? I mean, the way that this is going, and I've been part of those negotiations before, and people thought it was a goat rodeo when I did it, and it's 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 now a three ring goat rodeo. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, uh, go ahead. I, no, I, I forgot what I was going to say. So okay. On the fire, on the submitted fire department budget, um, the chief salary was I'm listed. Sorry. May I may I suggest that if we're going to discuss specific items, that we, we proceed sequentially through the budget and bring them up, unless there's something particularly um, urgent and wide ranging. If this is specific to the fire department budget, can I ask you to hold that until we get to the fire department section of the budget, well, rather than jump, doing that rather than jumping around? That was my intention, is to, is to go through and go by section by section and say, what do you got? It's like, we've presented numbers to you. What do you guys think? Do you, do you agree with the numbers that are presented to you? If so, great, we move on. If you have concerns, we'll stop and we'll discuss them. It's like, and it, it, because I'd like to, rather than jumping around, I like to just proceed sequentially. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I, but you'll get your chance to talk about the fire department. Yeah, I mean, the bulk of our conversation was going to be way too. So all the rest of the stuff, you know, as far as he can't explain why his budget is 10% more than last year because of all the stuff he needs, right? So we understand that. Mm -hmm. So okay. the, only, the only thing that was vague in our minds, I think, uh, speaking for myself, was this number. And if Beth is suggesting 4% or 3 or 5 or whatever the select board's thinking, mm -hmm. just make sure we're we understand what that is and we can make our own determination if we think that's appropriate or not. Mm -hmm. And if we think yeah, it is, then we yeah, build plug four percent, right? So that's a lot of work. I'm okay with that. But in terms of um, she's done uh, you know, line by line, I mean no, I was thinking section by section and just sort of does anyone have any questions on select board general government? If not, does anyone have accountant, assessor, treasurer? And we can even do it in bigger chunks if we find we're going too slow. Is, is, is what is how I was thinking we'd do it. I don't know. I didn't discuss it with the other board members and we haven't discussed it with you. No, so. no, my, my, my only concern is that each, each of you individually go through what has been, what you know, Kelly has compiled and presented at, at some point. And, and then I don't know if you're ready to do that or not. I mean, we have our own, we've already approved half of the, of the departments. We're still, since we haven't done the COLA, we're still going to do the way we used to, which is level fund the salaries until they get to the floor. We'll make a recommendation, but we're not going to put the number in because that will be decided on the floor. Mm -hmm. And um, But if there is any other substantive things that need to be brought up other than what I mentioned, just in general, um, and, and, and again, I, I can't emphasize enough because I, I have, I've worked, you know, we've worked with Dead Boy, I don't know how many years, but this is the first time that I've seen her a little concerned. So I think if you could review the elementary school budget, she has suggested a couple of things that she might be able to to decrease, but that would be sort of a last a last resort. But that I think is going to be a major issue going going ahead because it's such a large part of our entire budget. Yeah. I'm Kelly, check me on this, but I believe the select board has minimal to no authority over the school budget that's submitted. Zero. Yeah, that the elementary school budget you can suggest a certain amount to the not the regional allocation, but the elementary school budget I, we have I control believe over that. All school, the school budgets school are committee. controlled by the elected school boards. So the ele elementary school budget we have an elected school board, they vote on the budget, they recommend it. And the select board has may make influential statements to the town, but has no control over the budget. And so we, so we have our political bully pulpit where we can say, yes, it's great, we recommend you pass it, or we can say, or we can thumb, well, we could thumbs down it. That's what, what I'm trying to say, Tom, is use your influential bully pulpit. I think it's a situation that we need to say that, yes, they have not voted and approved officially yet. They asked if we think that we're going to have a problem to get back to them. Okay. And, I mean, you were there, Brad. Mm -hmm. So you can recite word for word to Tom. Okay. Um, I, I thought there, there they could be, and they and they have actually, because of the situation, they've added fifty thousand dollar extra from their school choice budget to the elementary school budget to bring the number down. So now it's only at three hundred and 
15,000 or something like that over last year's budget. So that's the only thing I'm trying to say. I'm okay. not trying I, to be very, very I thought, nice I thought they were right as far as political and because you do, you guys do have influence. And uh, mm -hmm. even though you, we don't, we can't say we don't approve it, but we just say, look, we really would, you could help us out because. <laughs> I, I am friends with two of the three members of that committee. Of there, that you board. there you go. You haven't had any inclination on Tantasca, right? No, I mean, just from what she said, from it's what next she said. week, but yeah. she said it was going to come in basically level. The assessment's going to come level a little bit less, so she's yeah. not worried about that, but it's the elementary school budget. So. Did you guys have any specific things? No, if we're going to go through budgets, we better get started. I was going to say. Well, it's like, well, hopefully we don't have too much, um, I mean, Go you guys, yeah. Section so, one. <laughs> all right, so so I would say general government. Is there anything in there? Any, any, anything we need to talk about here? Which one is general government? They have titles on the uh, Total select, down to total select. Select. Can I look over your shoulder? Because mm -hmm. I tried to pull it up on my phone. And it's difficult. See? No, I mean, I don't think we're going to be on it. Let me suggest this. Yeah. Since technically this was, it's like, why don't you guys order your questions from the top of the budget down? And I, I'm I'm fine right now unless Marty has something or, or Tim or Bob or mm -hmm. or Sarah. I'm I'm looking for input from you. We've we've gone through okay. on a broad brush okay. everything, and we the, the main thing that's, that's that as I've mentioned is. The COLA, which is going to drive the salaries up, mm -hmm. and, the, and the elementary school budget. The other ones, you know, there's a few things here or there, but I, I don't think there's like thousands of dollars, right? Well, so well, it's not, not, not to spend the, reason, the time here doing that. The reason I suggest it this way, Jeff, is because Kelly has put the budget together. Right. It's like, and you have your thoughts on the back. It's like, we, we have ours, we have, we have access to Kelly, and so if you look at these numbers, and I know like last year, when we reviewed it, and we reviewed it late, it was in May, there were some numbers where there was a divergence between what the select board was thinking and what advisor was thinking. So what I'm asking for now is, can you help us under, it's like, so, and you've already identified wages and the cost of living. That's something that we need to figure out and come together on. What else in the budget do we need to figure out and come together on? I know Marty has a specific concern around the fire department. And so, it's like, and so I want to, it's like, because if you've looked at these budgets and you, uh, the, the departments and you've been like, yep, that, that's reasonable, that's reasonable, that's reasonable, no, no, minimal concern, minimal concern, whoa, it's like, we need to be talking about the woes. Well, that, that's what I just said. Well, but, I but, thought you were agreeing with me. No, but it's like, but, you but, want us to start rather than you tell us after you've already gone through the budgets. Yeah, I don't know if you've looked at the budget or not. That's always the issue. Mm -hmm. That's that's, that's our th but, situation yes, is to look at it. Yeah, so I don't I've know. looked at the budgets. I've looked at the budget some, but it's like I don't know where I need to look deeper until you raise your concerns. Okay. So, so we don't need to waste our time with the ones we've already approved. We have several large budgets that we have yet to finish, right. and maybe those are the ones we discussed. Yeah. And, and I guess I would say, yeah, if you've, if you've approved and it's in line with what, what Kelly has recommended, then... I haven't recommended anything. Oh, okay. Oh, what Kelly has provided. Then what Kelly has provided. All you've done is aggregated the response. Correct. Okay, okay. thank you for the correction, Kelly. What Kelly has provided. Right, presented, provided, that, that, that's fine. Can I just bring up one thing in the first section? And this is just my own question. So town administrator wages, FY25, 93,000. But based on your job description, there's probably more job duties than what you currently have right now. Should we still no, be? No, I, I do what's in that job description. But I thought there was like some more. Uh... She enumerated what she's actually doing versus what we originally okay. hired her to do. Is there anything else? And is, do you think that's a, 
good number to leave there, I guess yes, is what I'm getting at. Okay, that's all. I think that's a very, I think that's a final number. I just didn't know if we should be looking at more than that. That's what I said, that's what I said, yeah. Yeah, I think I can, I, you know, I can uh, agree with Re Rephrase Jeff it for me. That, yeah. uh, okay. that, you know, we, all the, all the uh, uh, departments we've looked at, um, and again, that was my question about the backup sheets, because uh, I know they add up to the front sheet, but it's just not as easy that way. But one of the, one of the issues was, is the fact that a lot of people came through level funding, which no worries, that's fine. And then for the places where we saw increases, we did have some conversation. We haven't had all those meetings yet. We met with Chief Martell the other day, so we understand where he's coming from, and we agreed with what he's talking about. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to approve that budget because because of various reasons. But so, but I think overall, the the, the budget as as as, as presented uh, from everyone w seemed appropriate for what their needs were. There wasn't anything too crazy except school budget. And now that we've had this conversation about cola being somewhere four percent, then that makes that a relatively simple thing to walk through as well. Um, but you know, besides that, there. You know, there are other issues that may or may not be more important than going through this line by line. That is the big ticket items that, you know, are coming up somewhere, somehow, you know, from the elementary school roof to the, to the highway barn's need for additional equipment mm -hmm. to the fire department need over the next few years for potentially some equipment. So I guess the, the, I'm just thinking about the best, best use of our time. Mm -hmm. is more, could be more of a conversation about those bigger ticket items and what the mm -hmm. thoughts are between the select board and the, and the advisory committee. Because again, with the COLA thing hopefully sorted, the rest of it's really pretty straightforward. So, so what, did, what did our uh, free cash come back at this year? 544000 Okay. And do we have from the accountant the various fund levels of our stabilization and the various like capital improvement fund and the PEB and all that happy stuff? Okay. So now, do y'all do they have copies? No. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can we go make some copies? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so okay. I'm giving you that because you have the stabilization information on it. Okay. But I don't, that, that whole thing is not. For, it's just a working sheet. It's a working sheet. Okay. It's not for. So, so, but we could provide them the number of the free cash and stabilization funds. Yeah, separately. that's actually here. I think I, I think is it in there? That. Okay. And, 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 the, and the reason why, I, I'm sorry, and the re only reason why I'm saying that is because, to your point, we've got a lot of big things in front of us, school roof, but, you know, other capital expenditures. I think one of the starting points in the planning is what have we already set aside and what do we need to continue to set aside, right? Because OPEB, we're going to need to continue to put more money away if we're going to be compliant with stabilization accounts. Um, all right, so okay. I can give you. Do you want to give us a verbal on the yeah, stabilizations? Sure. So, in, stabiliz in, in compiled stabilization, you have $849,000, uh, $879,873.04. That's a combination of all the stabilization accounts. In your general stabilization, it's $582,000. 676.7. Capital stabilization. Let me know when you get it. So, just, so the Excel spreadsheet shows a free, a free casting with what's I proposed. Yes, that, that's, but yes. Was this one of the uh, tabs on that spreadsheet or not? No. Okay. This, this is not um, okay. no. um Because it fluctuates, it changes. Yeah. Because they're investments, so it changes monthly. Yeah. Uh, general stabilization is $92,295.34. You have rec stabilization, OP, SP, rec stabilization, which is specified for rec use, is $5,832.74. Roof stabilization is $155,119.42. Opioid stabilization, again, special purpose, same as roof, um, $13,776.25. And then property improvement, $182.02. Yeah. 
going to give a lot for that. <laughs> you know? Um, anyway. Between your general capital and roof stabilization, based on a quote that came in from the school, you don't have to fix the roof today. However, the school did not ask for a warrant article to fix the roof. Mm. No, I mean, they were more just saying is that the number has expanded, and then I think Brad's thought was, well, geez, if we can anyway do it because of our bond rating and you know, improvement or whatever, sure. maybe we should try to take parents. care of it sooner rather than later because the costs are just going it, up. Yeah, I mean, one, it's just going to go up, and two, there's going to start to be damage to the building, and that's going to make the cost go up even more, right? So the, the proposal that the school sent over, the quote that the school sent over, has two different roof structures. One is over a million dollars guaranteed for 25 years. One is 474,000 guaranteed for 30 years. Don't look at me, I didn't write the proposal. <laughs> I'm just giving you the information. Okay. That's a broad spectrum. That's a very broad spectrum. It's a very so those are newer ones, because the last ones we saw were like <coughs> six or 800,000 for some sort of temporary repair. They yeah, this actually is a roof replacement. Both of these costs are roof replacement. Uh, I sent it to uh, Brad to ask for it. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that. Is, is that the it difference? It came out in January. I got it from Deb in January. That's the same one you have. The one but they have not asked for a warrant article. Have we, have we reminded everybody that warrant articles are due by what date? Yes. yes. We have. They, they might have just not known um, to put it in there? No, they know. No. Kelly, were those costs for the same roof replacement, or is it the difference between the flat roof replacement and the pitched roof replacements? Because they have a variety of roofs there at the school. I'll send you the report, and then you can, you can see what they're talking about. It, it specifically targets areas on the roof in the report. And I think they were talking about the pitched roof versus, because the flat roof, I think, is what's over the gym. The pitched roof is all in the front section. This, this is the one that we got. Yeah, right. Yep. So we got the 904 to the 1.8. So is she talking about this? And this is, oh, so these two are the ones. There are two different types of roof about. replacements. The report itself shows you exactly where the replacements will take place. No. I see what she's saying. I see what she's saying. I have a newer one. Newer on this one. Yeah, check the data. So it's, that's an either or not an right, and. So that's it. Okay, so the so one we have is an old. So that proposal is an either or not an and? Yes. Ah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I sent it out. <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the same one. Okay, well. Either way, I, th I think, you know, Deb Boyd did mention it in passing in our <coughs> discussions with her. She thought that due to the size of it, you know, there should be some sort of a subcommittee or something appointed to, to look into which one of the things is better since it's a large sum of money. And yeah, I think we some are technical, so yeah, um, revising the yeah. capital improvement committee. Or um, maybe that's why well, she did the We're, 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 we're better at purpose committees than we are at general purpose committees, so. I think if we if we Could put out an ask for, just for it that. just for the school roof um, design review or something like that, or then we have a better chance of getting people because it's a finite period of time, right? And then we that, ask them to do a little more. What's that? And then we ask them to do a little more. Well, well yeah, but you know, or it's the same thirteen people. Right? <laughs> so um, I mean, because the, the the issue of the Warren article didn't didn't even come up. I think she said it was such a wide range, and she wasn't sure, you know, what exactly which concept to go with, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, if you go with the million dollar one, you're gonna to need to have an OPM as well. <coughs> OPM? Owner project manager. Okay. Representative. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we it's need such to a big project we have to hire one. I believe yeah. in an OPM over yeah, if one culture, yeah. yeah, but if one <laughs> estimate is forty percent of the others, there's obviously something they're not there's not apples in the form. It's not it's apples and oranges. You can't have two bids that crazy different. That's all. I don't know. We've we've worse. we've seen we've seen similar discrepancies. Typically, I would agree with you, okay, because what you say makes sense. But sometimes, what contractors come back with back with for municipal projects and common sense got nothing to do with one another. 
for Lewis Field, we had quotes that ranged from like $76,000 to like $400,000. And they, we had better reviews on the con construction joint that had the $76,000 quote than the one that had the 400K quote. So you would think that what you said is true. It, it just might not be true. So, um, so I think we just, I think you're right that we need to understand what's in those bids. That's why we're recommending a committee to make a recommendation in the town. My recommendation would be we, we vote tonight to put a whole, article without the funds determined on the annual town meeting warrant for the roof okay we also and we can't probably vote it now but we put on our next meeting to form a school roof committee to advise the town meeting on which roof proposal that they recommend and why Mm -hmm. or to recommend to us so that we can recommend the town meeting what that budget ought to be and we can put the make the article be a construct that allows us to go for lending instead of cash if that's the right thing to do from a funding perspective and should we be coordinating this with the school committee probably yeah this but I mean we owned a warrant but we can we could recommend that they ask us to to also co-sponsor yeah so 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 I mean it would be nice to have the school committee co-sponsor the warrant article so it's clear that we're aligned on it and it may be that we want the the, the roof committee to have a member of the board of selectmen a member of the school committee and three you know at-large representatives mm -hmm. from the town yeah the uh, school committee the elementary school committee meets next Tuesday yeah so we want anything on their agenda we've got a small window so i mean it's up to you do you want us to should we reach out and have, have them put it on their agenda first i think i think we should have them i think we bring i think we bring the idea to them we discuss it with them and then at our next meeting we discuss their feedback and we decide what makes sense to go forward because i think i think we should have the school committee on board with us and be working in harmony with them not surprising them with what we're doing won't object to that. Does All anybody right. have time to go to the school committee meeting? It's a Tuesday, and actually basketball season is just ending. I, is it Tuesday I, or Wednesday? Um, if, you, if Brad doesn't want to go or if Brad's not available, no, I, I, I can't oh, go. No, that's right. Your Tuesdays yeah. aren't your day. Okay, then then I'll go and I'll, I'll reach out to Nikki and uh, Andy and talk to them they, separately. In that meeting, they have their uh, public hearing on the twelfth. Oh, on the on the budget. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a great. So you don't even have to get it on the agenda. You can just talk to them in the context of the. The public hearing for yep. the budget. Yep, I'll give them a uh, I'll give them a heads up. Yep. And that's three twelve meeting at B E typically at B E S. Yes. Um, one, uh, circling back, uh, that you floated the idea of uh, targeting a four percent rate of yep. cola and. I think I think that we, we haven't discussed that yet. We have we, 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 we we've discussed it, but I don't think we've con, I don't feel we've converged on it. Okay. So I just want to say I I'll I'll say that I'm uh, I'm comfortable targeting at least four percent. I think it's going to be tough looking at all the pressures on the budget between the non-school and the school ads, but I think it's the right thing to do. So I think we target it and it, and see where it leaves us relative to. Combination of the levy limit and where it leaves us on the tax rate, and mm -hmm. do the best we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if we need to adjust, then we have our justification for why, why we're, we're adjusting. Yes. Okay. You know, so I'm, I'm not know. wedded to it. I just want to start somewhere and see where it lands. I know. And so, uh, Jeff. We had uh, well, Marty no, had a question on the fly. Oh, well, no, yeah. uh, I want to convey something to you, and then I was going to let Marty go because okay. you, you you had asked you you had asked for us to make uh, give some have some discussion around the cola, and and we just did, and we have agreed we we have decided that we are going to target four percent. Right. And we'll need, and so I want to make sure that you know that that's something that, that the board has discussed amongst ourselves. And that we've all converged on. I, I heard that loud and clear. Okay, good. I, I, I want to make sure you didn't miss it. Okay. Uh, I did not miss it. No. All right. So go ahead. <laughs> and then we'll, you'll convey it to the department so they are aware of it. Yes. yes. So they won't be the ones. 
Yes. That's the idea. No, 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 no. We're, we're, the, we're the elected the political leaders. leaders. We're the ones that need to take that lead. Yeah. Oh, I know. They, so, well, they can make their own. They can make their own. What you're asking them to tell everybody, which is going to set an expectation, right? Well, the, well, the, well, well, the one thing party, I want to make sure. It's like, I, well, I can say, we can make it clear that, these, that, these, sure that this is a select board up. decision and that we are targeting it, that it is our target, but that it is subject, it is subject to further review of the budget and, and it, is, it is fundamentally subject to change. It's like if it turns out that by reducing it we avoid a, uh, a prop two and a half override, well that's a strong reason to, to, to pull it back some. I mean, would I crank it down to one to avoid a, uh, an override? I, that seems a little extreme, but if bringing it from four to three and a half would avoid the override, well, that's a strong, that's a compelling case. So it's a target. We have to see how reality fits around that. And is it going to, is it going to completely kneecap it or is it going to fit right in nice and easy? And, and as the advisory committee is, um, is, is free to, to make its own recommendations. So Jeff, uh, th thank you for letting me convey the thing I wanted to convey. And I think you guys had something you wanted to bring up to us. Marty wanted to speak. Okay. I uh, just wanted to say there was a discrepancy on the submitted fire department budget according to Chief Martel. Okay. On the chief salary, um, it was listed as $14,000. Uh, chief Martel kind of implied to us that he's done his own um, comparative salary analysis and he wanted a value of $18,000 for the chief salary. Has he provided any comparative analysis? He, verbally, he did. He gave us numbers from other places that he, you know, compared. Yeah, there's a couple others that were in the, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think so this is like a, his per household, and then this is per household. household. No, yeah, no, and then this is some no, 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 no. That's got nothing to do with the chief salary. Yeah, it does. The, the, their salaries are in the emails. Oh, oh, yeah, in his email. This is Different the packet. Document. Yeah, this is. Okay, but, okay, then because because the, the, the issue for, for for me to for for me personally consider that it's like I'd want to know. Okay, what towns are comparing them to? How do they? What makes those towns relevant comparisons? That's fine. I'm just making you aware of it so you guys can have your own discussion. Okay, thank you. Th th thank you. And so he's so. His, so we have the request at fourteen thousand dollars. I'm seeing here, but you're saying he's intending to increase his request to something around eighteen thousand dollars based on his market analysis. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have not voted on that one yet. Yeah. But you know, and he's submitting two uh, articles on the eighteen point four appropriations. Okay. He submitted way more than two articles. Way more than two. <clears throat> way more than two. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think he Thank submitted you. five articles. And he's currently, hold on one moment, please. Yeah. And I double checked that zip code is the right one. That is, that is the current, the roof report <coughs> that you showed me is the right roof report. Hold on one moment, please. So the thing we have right. oh, so the, the one that we have is correct. I have thermal imaging device from the chief. Yeah, at 11,000. Yeah, he's having clothing. Well, one was for? 25,000 and he's yeah. breathing air compressor at 82,000. Yeah. Um, he, he did propose other water articles, but they are not money water articles. Mm. Okay. Did you change this now to 18? Or are you leaving it at 14? I have 18 in my spreadsheet. For the fire chief seller? Yeah, um, I might have it linked to the wrong slot. Replacement. So, I will. Oh, I said, oh, look at it. But, I mean, the rain was still significant. Yeah. We looked on the individual. No, I have it as 18. Huh. He probably sent me the update. Yeah, well, look at this. He's not getting a You have it as like a. Yeah, it's a read only. Yeah. Kelly, my shoe has 14,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. No, I don't have it. Okay. Random, the right thing. Yeah, 18, I see for testing. Based on their comments. I think they were saying it should have been 18 and not 14. Right. 
you have you have like email from the chief saying that he wanted eighteen or was this just So he presented he came to the meeting last Thursday yeah. and presented his budget and gave us this work cost analysis and presented why he thought that he needed the eighteen thousand based on other towns. In, the, in his packet. Oh, so he but didn't we, submit. But yeah, so he submitted it to us, but when, or to talk about it, but when we went to the spreadsheet, it said 14,000. Because that's Instead of the 18,000. Yeah, that's yes, what he yeah. Yeah. So am I being asked to update the spreadsheet? Please, I'm happy to do that. Um, I would say that we should ask, uh, we should use this to opportunity to ask Chief Martell uh, if he has any updates to his request, and if so, if he could provide any supporting information with that, he gave with his market analysis, analysis, and he could send that to us, okay. and then we can, can you consider it. I think that makes the most sense, and just my thought is if he doesn't, I don't see a point in updating the number if he's not going to ask us. But I don't mind nudging him and saying, you got something to ask me? And that'll also encourage him to provide his, um, his market analysis. Can I ask one, one more question of you, Kelly, as far as when you, um, the number you gave me as far as under the levy limit, I don't remember what week that was. Do you have any updated information as far as? The school passed over the year levy limit by 113000 Okay, that's what I was afraid of, but I wasn't sure if I heard that 150, if you put a placeholder or anything in to for the school. We don't have the police contract, and we don't have the district school, so that number is going to go up. So, so you didn't assume a police contract number either? Then? I did not. Okay. No. Right, I, no as worries. I stated, and then, I then, then the, uh, then the regional high school. Okay. So, with the budget that was presented, so the budget is presented with the wage increase people asked. For. Mm -hmm. Is that what's 150000 over levy with the school? Um, with the school. The FY24, 25 I did pass. not put in what everybody asked for because people asked for more than, um, I don't know what the select board is going to request. So I did the numbers just as an exercise to see where they landed with level funding. From 24. All Yes. Okay. All I love funding all of the expense accounts and putting in a three point seven percent increase across the board, and it puts us over five hundred thirteen based on projected revenues. And that includes and that's a new five percent with the police that we haven't put in yet. No, I have not. But it does that. include a three point seven percent. Oh, it does include three point. Um, yes, I believe that. I all right, so it's not as bad as we thought. So. No, because I don't believe the police number's in there. The police number's not in there, neither is the um, district school. Yeah. Yeah. The guidance no, for no district is... No, increase for either one, but level funded for both of those. From yes. 24. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now, from what uh, I heard from you guys, the, the district the district um, allocation will be close to what it was last year, so we're not expecting a big increase there. We've been led to it, not expecting. The regional one, no. Yeah, it's supposed to be the same like, yeah. or a little bit less. Okay, thank you. But I, I just got confused, Kelly, on your last sentence, mm -hmm. because when you told me, again, whenever it was, we were 150 under, under. that did not, you said it did not include this increase for the elementary school. Right. Correct. It didn't okay. in include the school, it didn't include the police department right. wages, and it didn't include uh, the district school. All right, now I'm confused. I thought your original statement was somewhere around, with the new school budget, elementary school, it put us 115, 13,000 over the levy limit with level funding. So you're talking two different things. Jeff is asking me about a number I gave him prior to getting oh. to school. So that's why it is okay. a different answer. Right. <laughs> no, okay, but as of, as of today, as of with today. the elementary school, what they're requesting, mm -hmm. we're over 113, is what you $113,600.50. Okay. And there's some other incremental up from the police because it was a 3.75 rather than the 5, which we just agreed. So, uh, unless we want to override, then we're going to have to figure out where to chop Well, and, 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 and importantly, and that's obviously not included anymore. 
Typically, warrant articles are funded from free cash, which is free not directed on the, on the, um, they're on not the levy. Typically levy. Raising appropriate. Okay, so th this is this is the main point that I wanted to at least make sure we're all on the same page. Is that what what we have right now is that we're on a levy override or over the levy limit. So that's that's where we have to start figuring out scenarios. The combination of the requests that we have received from the from the departments and the school and the ex and expected increases in police based on the outcome of the uh, negotiation with the union, um, those will uh, all put the budget over our levy limit. I mean, my, my read of the numbers is that with the school, it's going to be the, the budget is increasing by half a million. Now that is, now we have about a $10 million budget. The tax levy is $6 million. And I don't believe state aid is going up. I don't believe local revenue <coughs> is going up. So the this tax levy is seven million dollars. Oh, seven million. Thank you. That's a little bigger piece. But that still puts us in a, I would say, a seven or eight percent increase in the tax levy. And with no, and that means that if no one's property changes value with no new growth, that's a seven or eight percent increase in the tax bills. We have roughly, at this point, I can safely say we'll have $37,940 in new growth. Okay. Based on the current new growth gathered at this point in time right now. Mm -hmm. All right, so that takes that takes some of it off, but that's, I would say would that you, still puts us in like six, seven percent. Would you like projected revenues? Um, I would like those, um, I'm not sure I'm ready to, to go through them in this context. Or, well, maybe. Um, I might be ready. I'll take them. <laughs> You're going to read them to me? So oh. we have the prior year levy limit, which is down because we have an abatement, so there was an adjustment to the prior year levy. It's only down by roughly $2,500, but it went down. Um, so the prior year levy limit is six million six hundred sixty-five thousand three hundred forty-one dollars and forty-five cents. That's FY twenty-four. And yes, so to that you add two and a half percent, which is one hundred sixty-seven thousand. Wait, no, wait, let me go. Wait, I did this in a spreadsheet. I shouldn't be reading the numbers at all because the spreadsheet won't lie, and I might have missed it. Okay. So, that's right. So your your two and a half percent is one hundred sixty-seven thousand eight hundred thirty-two point <coughs> four cents. The new growth to date, which will increase, is forty-seven thousand nine hundred and forty dollars, with a total projected levy limit of six hundred six million eight hundred eighty-one thousand. $113.49. We also have a debt exclusion, which was voted by the town. Mm -hmm. Roughly, it will, I have it in as $39,956, because that's what we had on the recap sheet last year, and I won't have that number until we do the recap sheet this year. <coughs> so our total allowable levy is $6,921,069.50. Projected state aid is, I'm using last year's low. I always use a lower projected number mm -hmm. and a higher assessment number when I'm budgeting because it's safer. I, I agree. So you can't go wrong in either direction. It can mm -hmm. only get better. Right. So the projected state aid is 3,083,186. Are you taking notes for this, Sarah? Because I can just email this to you. Yeah. Okay. Kelly, is that state aid net of expenses or is no, that is revenue not. only? Okay, thank you. No, it is not. Um, other available funds that go into the recap that are part of the weather uh, limit and so forth is um, roughly $979,057. That includes all of the free cash and the EMS articles, which are funded from other revenues. So this is all part of setting the box, right? Mm -hmm. 
So we have uh, local receipts is projected at one million seventy two thousand four hundred and four dollars and thirty three cents for a total projected revenue of five million one hundred thirty four dollars thirty four thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and thirty three cents. So your total appropriations based on the budget. Um, would be eleven million five hundred seventy thousand two hundred thirty-seven dollars and thirty cents, which is more than you see in the budget. But that's because you have to appropriate other things on the recap sheet. Right, because the the yeah the recap sheet works different. When I got into the recap sheet, I realized it works differently than I approached it, and I had to. I was trying to re realign things to fit in with the recap sheet and allow the recap sheet to drive a lot of work. So the, the other costs that are on the recap sheet, which include... Hold on, Kelly. Can I go back? Uh, some of my numbers didn't add up. So state aid was 3,083,000? 186. 186, okay. And then other funds was 979,000? 57. Make a motion that we extend the meeting. So, <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, all in favor of extending the select board meeting uh, per policy, please say aye. 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 All right. So nine hundred seventy-nine thousand and change, or nine hundred seventy-nine thousand fifty-seven dollars. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm just rounding the nearest thousand. And local receipts was one hundred seventy-two thousand. One million seventy-two thousand oh. four hundred and four. <laughs> that's, that's a very important zero. That's that's very that's where there. that's I where I that's, that's where, where I missed that's it. Where okay. You went astray. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, okay, thank you. I'm I'm with you. Right. So when, our, when you email it to her, can you email it to, uh, to us? Because <laughs> I'm not, I, I, not yeah. even dealing with it, right? Yeah, I started to, but I'm like, yeah, no, this is not happening. So the total appropriations are eleven million five hundred and seventy thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars and thirty cents. That includes the free cash articles and the EMS warrant articles. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the calculation. Mm -hmm. The other costs on the recap sheet, which include offset receipts, which show up oddly enough on the page that says that they're giving us money, but we actually have to raise that money on the recap sheet, mm -hmm. um, is $567,186. Those are other costs on the recap sheet. I can give you a breakdown of what they are, if you'd like. It's entirely up to you. It's fine. So when we take our total annual budget of $12,137,383, subtract our projected revenue, with which, which is the $5 million number, we have a raise and appropriate number of $7,2,735.97, which exceeds our total levy limit. Um, now, by roughly $113,000. Using very conservative numbers. Yes, using very conservative numbers. And that's using the current assessed values. They are going to go up because we had good growth last year, which is roughly $3 million in, in assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's going to go up and that's going to lower this number. So we'll be much closer to what we what we need to do. So these are these are just projected <coughs> based on the current available data. Yes, because the, the tax rate is set by the tax recap, which happens at the end of the calendar year. And that's when the new growth, that's when the final new growth number is available. And all of that. But that should be available by the end of the summer. Oh, really? Okay. It's the EQBs that we're looking for, which is the DOR certifying that our current assessed data, our assessed values based on last year's new growth, they adjust all of the um, values for the other five, which plugs into the recap sheet. Okay, but the, so that the new growth plugs into the, uh, the recap process, yep. which determines pretty much, which determines how much we have to levy in taxes, which then determines how much everyone's tax bill is. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I remember we tried to figure this out when we did not have a town administrator. It was a much slower process. Well, it took us three years. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. If you all want to play, I completely recreated the recap sheet in Excel, and you can move every number, and it will all feed and change so you can look at you want to play with the town receipts, you can see mm. what it'll do. You want to play with the values, you can see what it'll do. Send me a copy. It's a nifty little thing. <coughs> does it spit out the uh, estimated tax rate? It does. Yeah. Yes. Good. And yes. you can figure out what it, like if you allocate 100 grand, what that specifically We had a thing means. like that 10 or 12 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It will spit out the estimated tax rate. So if, um, even though it exceeds our levy limit, estimated tax rate as it sits right now, which is, the values are gonna make a huge, huge difference in this, um, is roughly a dollar more. Right, and the again, values are one of the biggest inputs on that. Yes. So, yeah. But again, it doesn't include any of the requested increases on the 25 budget, right, from the departments. So, the way I did the way I did the projection was I level funded everybody's expense accounts and, and put in the, the salary increases yep. minus the school and the but we saw a number of uh, departments raise proposed more in their expenses. In yeah, they did. They did. Right. That made a big difference. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so I'm saying, so if we include those, right, this hundred thirteen thousand, I'll just keep coming up. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think we're all on the same. Just based on these numbers, it would, it's a possibility that there would be a override or something if we decided the budget is I th I think, unless we try to. <laughs> I, I think fundamentally, it's yeah. the, the, the choice before us is to is to go for is to go forward with the override, or how much do we want to cut, and are we interested in cutting enough to avoid the override? Well, and the flip side is, is that, first of all, there's a lot of assumptions in there that, that are, are going to shake out between now and town meeting. So before we sure. even start talking about an override, Kelly, Kelly was very careful on how she phrased a lot of this. It doesn't include the valuation changes. It does not include the fact that the cherry sheet numbers typically, you know, all of our state representatives want to get reelected. So generally speaking, those cherry sheet numbers between now and town meeting will go up. Mm -hmm. um, Usually the, the governor comes out with the best bang for the buck because they know the House and the Senate are going to throw it away. Right. So they get to feel good about themselves and go, look what I tried to do for you. Right. And then the House and the Senate, they're going to throw away the governors and then yeah. the next But you know, the, la the, the last so few years, though, they've come in within spit and distance of, of one another. Yeah, they've actually been playing kind of nicely. Yeah. I'm actually so. going tomorrow morning to Holyoke to yeah. the so. legislative thing they're doing there. So I, I, I refuse to panic and even use the word override yet until we see some more solid numbers. Yeah, I wasn't to the table. Okay. That's, be overly I guess I guess the third the option way. is to is we, to is is to sit tight and see if the uh, if the worst case scenario does manifest. Or see how much it yeah, works. That's fair enough. Um Karen. Um could you please ask Kelly for links to the cherry sheets and the recap form? Go ahead, ask me. Do <laughs> well, you want me to send you some links to the cherry sheet? I want them can... included in the minutes. Okay. That's what. That's where I was going. Oh, would you, Kelly? Let me rephrase that, Karen. Would you please include links to those things in the minutes? <laughs> and I'm and I can provide them if needed, but I think Kelly can provide them a lot faster than me. Might be the uh, better way to put it. All right, that did come out poorly, Kelly. Sorry about that. You are funny. Well, I mean, o over time, the, the, the other larger question is what's well, going to show up in the morning. You heard about the gate 2000, the new air pressure on the fire station, which is what Chief Martell talked to us about as well last year, mm -hmm. last, last week. So it, it's also important to understand, even if we avoid the, the, any sort of uh, override requirement this year, obviously, going into next year, we have to think about what we're going to do. And, and uh, right, because, I mean, you've got the air compressor, you've got potentially a, some sort of backhoe or some other piece of equipment at the hydro department, you've got at some point another fire engine someday, sometime in the next X years, right? You add some, and obviously we're going to see you know, the need for another cruiser. So when, later. when you borrow for very large things, like, like a, you, you do a, a debt yeah, exclusion yeah. and it increases yeah. your levy limit, so you won't need an override. 
So if you want to borrow, <coughs> do a capital exclusion, which is a one-time purchase. Um, it's a one-off. It's not going to be spread out over the years. Uh, that increases your levy limit. A debt exclusion increases your levy, your levy limit, as well as an override would increase your levy limit. Yeah. Yeah. So there are, there are funding options, so you wouldn't need an override. And the articles no, 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 yeah, that yeah, you're no, talking yeah. about are, are typically funded with free cash. So that's also not going to hit the tax rate, yeah. depending on how you fund them. You have more requests this year than you have for free cash, though. So you are going to have to pick and choose which of those you want to support. Yeah. Right. But, but at least that's, that's be clear. a list that doesn't move as much as some of the budget stuff was moving. Yeah. So that, yeah, 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 that <laughs> but to be clear, debt, debt exclusion still has to be paid back just like an override. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Pay. So absolutely. it still shows up in your tax. Yeah, absolutely, so. and it does need a town meeting vote, yeah. but it, it it doesn't raise your levy okay. limit forever. Yeah. Whereas an override does. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay. Good. Okay. Tom, excuse me. Can I can I ask a? I think we're we're good with our. I just when would be the next time that we you could be able to schedule us so that we could talk again once we have more information collected and we have further further along so to speak sometime end of April or what would be a good time you think to well, I mean, Kelly what was our target for wrapping up the operating well, budget? Oh, you didn't and vote for the town meeting date. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. still on. That's still on agenda. I thought I thought Not, we, well, we I did. thought we discussed a target date. Um, with a general town meeting date in mind, rather than a hard one, and I thought the board, I thought the board you discussed. You did take that. a date to close the warrant, but I don't remember what it was. was. I think it was three twenty-eight. Yeah, that, that sounds right. So the end so. of this month, the warrant will close, and we'll further articles. Okay. So but I, I just want to make sure that we get on the agenda yeah. again, yeah. and yeah. we're not yeah. scrambling. What date did we say? But it was so, all. It, I guess the advice puts it off, which makes it more important to be on Tuesday. Mike said it should probably Not until the 28th. We Saturday. historically do that. probably get a line of this from her as far as what's been submitted. Well, hold on. Let's, let's come together. So from a schedule standpoint, so three weeks from now, we have we have we yeah, I saw that too. I have I planned. It was just a format. I think it was just sort of like a template. Oh, yeah. yes. so, so we have, um, the, the, the select board has voiced its, as a group has voiced its, its intention to close the warrant at the end of the month right. to allow to allow us yeah. to to get it out to council and I'm sure there are other things that need to be done. So with that in mind, uh, Kelly, when you say close the warrant, does that include the operating budget? Everything. Okay. That's well, no. Let me rephrase that. No one can submit a warrant article except the selectmen once the warrant is closed. Okay. There is a warrant article that's already in there for the budget. You mm -hmm. can amend that article up until it goes to print. Mm -hmm. okay. So the budget is, is open until you decide that you're happy with it. Okay. So we so we are so we are people. We can receive requests or submissions b between now and the end of the month that we have not seen yet. Correct. Okay. So that tells me that the next time we should get together would probably be um, at the beginning of April. In yeah. whenever uh, April fourth or whatever, the first our regularly scheduled first Thursday of the month meeting in April. Does that make sense to the board? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jeff. Does that make sense to your? To I, you? I was thinking maybe mid April, just so that we have a chance to look at the warrant articles um, uh, or not. I, um, we yeah, Tom. If if you close the warrant on the twenty eighth and somebody gives me warrant articles on Thursday at four o'clock, they're not going to be ready for the meeting on Thursday okay. at, at six thirty the following week because. Right. Then, then, uh, the, then the third, then our third Thursday, our, our no, other meeting in April, the third I Thursday would seem like a better choice. Well, um, I just want to make sure. Kelly, does, is that so your recommendation that we plan to have that discussion with the advisory in uh, at our third Thursday meeting in April? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what yeah. The, I, that might have been when we met last year. I'm not yeah, sure, third, but third Thursday. I think if that's what people are comfortable with, then that would. Just be clear, that's April that 18th. works for us. And I will, okay, and that is the 18th. Yes. And there's no rule that says you can't meet on the 11th if you're ready okay. sooner. Yes, or you I will. Just focus on that one time. Yes, yes. I will caution the, uh, that is April vacation week. Those of us with children in school, okay. um, if we have plans for April vacation, they would, uh, uh, scheduling this for the 18th would uh, require that you be back from those plans or we, 
Brad, do you have any plans for the April vacation that have you going away? Uh, I don't control that calendar. Okay. Um, <laughs> then let, let, us, let us put a placeholder in, but Brad, and, and as I don't control that calendar so much myself either, we can both check and make and confirm. I, I, I just wanted to raise the issue to make sure that we were able to come back again at some point. No, no, no. Everyone's thinking about it. No, I think, I think that was, thank you, Jeff. That, that was the right idea. I'm all positive thinking this year. You know, I'm, I'm trying to push everything. Is there a regular meeting? But Jeff, I think right now the plan is that we will, um, we are intending to do this on the 18th. Yeah. It's like that school vacation week, and so Brad and I have kids out of school that week, so we may shift it one week, one way sure. or the other, if that's an um, issue. If, if you send it, you cannot shift it forward. You must shift it backward to the 11th, because it needs to be in town council's hands by the 22nd. Got it. So if you don't do it on the 18th, you have to do it the week Okay. okay. And I'd rather do it. I, I would. Uh, that would. That would have been my pre preference anyway. To. Uh, I did. I would rather have moved it up. But. Um, okay. So. One of those two. Okay. All right. And so. And then what we can do is we. I think we should plan to have an agenda. An agenda item for our next meeting, to review the warrant articles and start deciding what we are. Um, and, st and make sure we understand it as well. I guess the question is to the board. Are we interested in discussing that at our next meeting on March 21st, or do we want to wait until April 4th when the, well, uh, all it, the articles are in? Let's put it on the agenda, and we can review what's in. We can review what's in, and we can then, anything else that needs to be talked about on April 4th can be talked on April 4th. Correct. And that way we can go into the meeting with advisory with our ducks all lined up. Okay, Karen, you heard that? We do the war articles on April 21st. Yes. Whatever's in by then. Okay. Yeah. I know we're also yeah. intending to meet with uh, Sun Fusions yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't got yes. it. Send it to me. Send it to me. And no, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Okay. I swear. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Then. Because then if I could just put the read down. Have you sent us the I don't have yours in here. We're currently 118,000 less than what has been asked for without your six requests. That's fine. Let's put I want to say five requests because one of those is to put I, I want to just put them all on a table so that we, okay. if we say no, they know, but yeah. Take the second right. go. Yeah, but mm -hmm. Protocol, I'm not sure. Um, That's what we get paid the big bucks for. All right, and then we also have to. Uh, we also should be discussing the date of the town meeting. I think there's I been some right. Some some concern has been expressed, and so I think yeah. we should. What? Do you want to? And so, want, and so, and so, and I, and I, I, and since advisory's here and they, they express some concern. Tuesday is bad for you? Well, unless we wanted you. No, I mean, I'll go Tuesday. You better okay. Thursday. I mean. Does everybody prefer Thursday? It for town meeting? traditionally been a Thursday. Right. It, but you need to decide well, was we need to reserve the school. So, so let's, let's, let's see if it's even available. Let's, let's, I'll make a motion that we, um, uh, target, and I'm going to say target because we don't know if the facility is available. Mm -hmm. Target Thursday, June 6th, with a fallback date of Tuesday the 4th, the 4th if the facility is not available. Okay. Okay. And I'll let town council know so that they can schedule. But that's yeah. The only input we have on that is that when we met with Deb Boyd, she Oh, she to wanted the fourth. Yeah, or she different. wanted the sixth, the Thursday, yes. because that's what she already had us planned for. Oh, huh. Be because okay. she has to attend a lot of other town meetings, also. Yeah, I think Hollis is the fourth. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, then let's leave it to sixth. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Care. All right. And so that was a motion. Yep. So let's just we'll just do it for the sixth. I'm gonna omit the uh, fallback date. Okay. Which one? So that's. Can I get a second? June 6th. Thursday. Uh, Thursday. 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 All in favor of uh, having an annual town meeting for uh, in, on June 6th, on Thursday, June 6th, 2024, please say aye. 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 And do you have a standard time that you want to do? 
uh, 6.30. In the past, yeah. <coughs> yeah, the select board has typically met at 6, and then when we had a previous year's special town meeting, that would be at 6.30, and then the annual town meeting would be at 7. I think we've dispensed with the special town meeting, and we try and start the <coughs> annual town meeting at 6.30. And I am all for maintaining that, uh, maintaining that continuity. We start the festivities at six thirty. Sarah, what email are you using now? Scam zero two at gmail.com. I want me to email her. <laughs> yeah, you want me to email you? Is that easier? email the request? <laughs> Did you just say scam? Yes. My initials. Well, part of my name. Yeah, my <laughs> Zero two x at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah, come on, car. You should know it. <laughs> Tom, is there anything else we can do? We can adjourn our advisory. Um. Anything else? I, is there talk anything about? else that the uh, board, that the select board would like to discuss with the advisory? Nope. Nope. I think we're good. Is it, there's anything? If there's nothing else you guys want to talk about, I think we're all done. Yeah, thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Okay. <laughs> and we are at the end of our agenda, also. Well, we also have to. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, motion to adjourn. Yeah. All right. Yep. Uh, I heard two motions. I need to hear a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor of adjourning at 836, please say aye. 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 <laughs>